So church is the place where you come to and you move. Because even when God was to create the world, without the movement of the Holy Ghost, God did not say anything. But was it? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Yes. Then God said, let there be light. So until there's a movement, God doesn't say anything. Yes. Most people go to church, they are still as stillness. And so they can't hear anything. God wants some shaking. Yes. And so that certain thing that could hinder your body from receiving from the Lord is shaking out. Amen. 
Amen. And some people already feeling some sweat. Yes. Yes. Right? <laughs> that is what church should be. Church is not a burial ground. Church is not a place for quietness. Amen. It's a place for the living. The Bible says the living of oh God shall praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So today let's shake our bodies, you know, when we come to the house of God. The contemporary music is good, the power to sit down, but this one also is part of it, amen? Amen. amen. The Bible says, praise the Lord in the dance. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you don't know how to dance, we're going to send you to dance in school. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is my church that you're going to get everything you want. Yes. You're going to get some dancing, some words, some power, some anointing, some everything together. Amen. That makes for the house, amen. 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 So let's give Jesus a big clap of this morning. Just a few minutes from right now, we're starting with the dedication service. And uh, you may be seated. I want the pastor and his wife to be with me here, praise God. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be called to this dedication to the dedication of the church. You may, it's a serious responsibility. It's just like you're dedicating a child. And so if you dedicate a child as a minister of God, you're connected with that child spiritually to be able to make sure that you're praying for the growth and there's, you know, the, 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 the spiritual awareness of that child as well as, you know, whatever the child's destiny is. So what I'm doing this morning is a serious responsibility for which I'm indebted to God and to this church to consistently pray together with the pastor to come to an alignment and alliance that we're together in this business. Amen? Amen. And forever until Christ comes. Amen. So in other words, I'm plugged in as part of this church. Amen. Amen. So my responsibility here this morning is not an easy one. But unto whom much is given, much is expected. And from whom much is expected, much will be given. Amen. I believe that God will give me grace to be able to play my role very well Amen. in this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the first thing we're going to be dedicating is us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to dedicate us to God. God we are actually the church, not this door. Right. Amen. Amen. We are the sanctuary. Yes. We are the temple of God. We are God to us. When Solomon was dedicating the temple that he, he, he built for the Lord, you know, to build a temple is not an easy thing. I mean, with all of David's love for God and all that God was so happy about, all his assignment, David put together materials for construction of the temple. He got the place, he got all the materials put together, and God said, you cannot build me a house. He had all the money, he had all the relationship with God, but God says, your hand is full of blood, so you cannot do it. But I have put somebody else in place from your from your bubbles, from your womb, that will build a house for me. I was Solomon. So and that is why it's very, very important to inquire from the Lord what we should do at each time. If you have a desire and a plan to do something for God, you love God and you no, that's not my place for you. So for God to have sent our brother here to start this assignment and God has brought each and every one of us into this today. It means that heaven has endorsed this assignment Amen. because God has a mission for us. So our dedication this morning is like, Lord, we are consecrating ourselves, Lord, to agree with what God has asked His Son to do. To say that God will present our bodies a living sacrifice unto you, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. As the place, place to begin, to present our hearts, our bodies, as a living sacrifice. That was what Paul enjoined us to do in the book of First Corinthians, uh, chapter twelve. Romans twelve, Romans 12 sorry, Romans twelve. To so present, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your heart. So there's something that God is calling us to hear, 
a life of not conforming with the standard of this world, but becoming transformers in the hand of God, for God to use us to transform this place better than we met it. Amen. So we are supposed to be in the ministry of transformation, to transform the world. So today, like Paul, I will ask you and beseech you that each one of us must come to a point this morning to say that God, I'm presenting myself to you, dedicating myself to you as a living sacrifice. What's a living sacrifice? A living sacrifice is a sacrifice that is alive. Not a dead sacrifice. Because of sacrifice, you have to kill them to make them sacrifice. But God says that while you are alive, I want you to be a sacrifice. So what it is to be a sacrifice, to, 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 to offer sacrifice? Sacrifice is something that you give that costs you something. So the quality of your sacrifice determines on who you are offering that sacrifice to. So God requires from us a quality sacrifice of our heart. And he wants us to do it with uh, a heart that is sanctified, purified, void of offense, void of impurity, void of anything that can contaminate. And that's why God has a standard for sacrifice in the Old Testament. If you are taking a standard as a sacrifice of an animal before the, before the Lord, it must not be something that is wounded or that is deficient in any way. It must be a perfect animal that has no deficiency of any kind, no blemish. And that's why even the army, if your leg is not good, it's not bad, they're not going to accept you because you're not a perfect sacrifice for the nation. You have to be really, really sound in health. When you stand at attention, every part of you, you know, is active. Amen. Amen. Just like our retired captain. So every nation requires people that are going to offer themselves a sacrifice to defend the nation. They must actually be fit physically. They must be fit mentally. They must be fit spiritually in order for them to be able to carry out their assignment. And so God is raising an army in this end time. And he's raising an army of people that are fit for the master's use. Amen. That's what God wants to do today. And so we're going to be here and, and God is looking for such people that can say today, I surrender. Now to become a sacrifice, God can determine to burn you he can determine to smoke you. It's his choice. You have no choice over your life again as a sacrifice. He can determine, he can decide to, to fry you. He can decide to put you in the oven. So he, he, he can choose anything he wants. When you offer yourself as a sacrifice to God, what you are saying is that I have no right over my life anymore. Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord today, that's what you're saying today. Take my moment, take my days, take my money, take my all. Yes, Lord. I've seen some sacrifices that are on the altar. When God comes there to want to slight their feet, they jump out and say, no, 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 it's painful. I don't want to take that. You know you have to sacrifice. You must be willing to give all. And you know what? All these animals we eat will tell you the, the pain they go through before they actually end up on our pots. Some of you will not even eat them. But God give us all these things to enjoy so that we can be okay. God sent you here as a sacrifice so that your service to God will become a sweet smell in the That will be acceptable in His sight for the purpose of those that God wants to bring in. Some people pay the price for us too. 
for us to get salvation. We paid the price. So what I said in this dedication this morning is that God uses us as a sanctuary so that when sinners come to this place, they will not go out there as sinners. Amen. When anybody comes in here thirsty, they will go back home, you know, their thirst will be quenched. Yes. When they come in here hungry, they will go back home filled. When they come in here sick, they will go back home healed. Amen. When they come in here confused, they will go back home with their mental capability working fine. Amen. When there is sin in this place, because of the mercy that flows through the blood of Jesus Christ, when we call upon the name of the Lord, He will have mercy upon us. Amen. Now, the, the reason, this is very, very important here as we dedicate this sanctuary and dedicate ourselves. One of the things that David actually struck to get with God was the covenant of mercy. It's stronger than any other covenant anywhere. Abraham had the covenant of blessings, of faith with God. But David worked so hard to get the covenant of mercy with God. And when he got it, I started the life of David as a worshiper. And I realized that that man actually went for the right thing. Christ came and said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It was the mercy that God had, the covenant of mercy that God had with David, that God transferred over to Solomon. It was, it was covering Solomon, even when they were dedicating the temple. He said, Lord, tomorrow, so tomorrow I was praying, that God, if anyone is sin, or the nation sin, and we enter into this house, I will begin to call upon your name. So remember the covenant that you have with David. Yes. It was a covenant of mercy. Amen. That God, when we call upon your name, that if anything happens, or there's plague anywhere, and we run into this sanctuary, we ask you that God deliver us. Amen. Remember your mercy. Amen. And that was why anytime people were going to approach Jesus Christ, when he came in through physically, people like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There's a connection between mercy in God and the covenant that God established with David. So one of the things we are asking God today is that God, don't let your mercy depart in the search. No matter what is going on, Lord, when we come upon your name, Lord, let the blood of Jesus speak for us. Amen. Let it speak deliverance. Yes. Let the blood speak salvation. Yes. of mercy yes, is what we need. The Bible says that mercy triumphs over Amen. judgment. Amen. Yes. We need the mercy of God to cover us in our homes, Amen. in our businesses, Amen. our children, and yes. all that we do. So today we are here to dedicate this temple. And so that we don't say we don't read any scripture at all. So open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Hallelujah. So that's why you are here. Come close to me. If you will come right here and then let your husband stay on the other side of you. And then praise God. Thank you. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings 8. Okay. All right, so let's read from verse 36. Just read quickly. Now, Lord God of Israel, Let's start with another. Please confirm what you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed live on earth? Even heaven, the highest heaven, cannot contain you, much less this temple I have built. Listen to your servant's prayer and his petition. Lord, my God, so that you may hear the cry and the prayer that your servant prays before you today, so that your eyes may watch over this temple night and day toward the place where you said, my name will be there, and so that you may hear the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the petition of your servant and your people Israel which they prayed toward this place. 
May you hear in your dwelling place in heaven. May you hear and forgive. When a man sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath, and he comes to take an oath before your altar in this temple, may you hear in heaven and act. May you judge your servants, condemning the wicked by bringing what he has done on his own head and providing justice for the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you and they return to you and praise your name and they pray and plead with you for mercy in this temple, may you hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel. May you restore them to the land you gave their ancestors. When the skies are shut and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and praise your name, and they turn from their sins because you are afflicting them, may you hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel, so that you may teach them the good way they should walk in. May you send rain on your land that you give your people for an inheritance. When there is famine on the earth, when there is pestilence, when there is blight, mildew, locust, or grasshopper, when their enemy besages them in the region of their fortified cities, when there is any plague or illness, whatever prayer or petition anyone from your people Israel might have, each man knowing his own afflictions and spreading it out his hands toward this temple, may you hear in heaven your dwelling place, and may you forgive act and repay the man according to all his ways since you know his heart for you alone know every human heart so that they may fear you all the days that they live on the land you gave our ancestors amen amen, amen. let's just bow our hands put your bibles down The first recipient of the dedication is the pastor and his wife. Because they've been separated for the work of the Lord and they've been serving here. But something is beginning today that is fresh. So stretch forth your hands to the pastor and his wife. Just begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray for us. Grace for power, for the blessings of God, for increase. Oh, Father, we pray for your children today. The God, by the power of your name, Lord, they are separated, oh God, of your higher calling, not for the city and the state of Alaska. The God, through the, their combined effort, this state will be delivered. This state will be delivered. This state will be delivered to you. Lord, we seek, O God, the option for them to function at the level of the calling. Lord, through the dedication of this temple today, we are the temple of the Lord. We are in you to us. So God, we use them for the expansion of your kingdom. And Lord, we give, Lord, give them this territory. Lord, and let every inch of the thing in this nation, in this state, Lord, respond, O God, to the anointing that God, you are giving them to do the assignment. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's raise your hand with me. Say, Lord, Lord I, dedicate I dedicate myself to you, to you as a living sacrifice. Point me. Point me. Cleanse me. me. Purify me. Take me. Mold me. Empower me. Empower me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. I give, I give myself, myself to you, to you today, today as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Holy, holy and acceptable. And acceptable unto you. Unto you. All the prayers. All the prayers. And we read to you with your word. And we read in your word. This morning. This morning. They are my portion. They are my portion. So Lord from today. So Lord from today. I become your temple. I will become your temple. I am sanctified. I am sanctified. For the master's use. For the master's use. I am ready. I am ready. To be 
Dios a Dios que no. So Lord, take me now. Lord, take me now. And use me now. And use me now. All my life. All my life. I give to you. I give to you. Nothing else. Nothing else. For me to hold. For me to hold. Take me now. Take me now. And use me now. And use me now. Take my silver. Take my silver. Take my gold. Take my gold. Take my house. Take my house. Take my car. Take my car. Take my money. Take my money. Take my time. Take my time. Take my family. Take my family. Take everything. Take everything. I give it unto you. Because I know. Because I know you are worth more than life itself. You are worth more than life. Itself. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for making me a living sacrifice. For making me a living sacrifice. Acceptable unto you. Acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're going to seal this quickly with the oil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, you have sent your son on an assignment in this land. We together agree that this land will answer for you. When you call for one, one thousand will show up. Men of means, people of high authority, they will respond to this call because you are sent of God for this great task. There will not be lack of anointing upon your head. Amen. Your head will never lack oil Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The glory of the Lord shall be your portion. The power of God will to flow in this place. Amen. And Alaska opens to you Amen. by virtue of this dedication today. Amen. We dedicate everybody. Amen. If you can just come quickly, just get it. Let's do it. We have two minutes. Father, thank you. We dedicate your service for the work of the Lord. We are dedicated in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are dedicated for the assignment of the Lord in Alaska in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are dedicated for the work of the Lord in this state in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Receive the function, the function, and to perform by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Let's do it faster. Thank you, Jesus, for your power upon your children. Oh, your we give you praise and glory. And Alaska is waiting for you to manifest. The glory of the Lord is upon your life. The power of God is flowing in you right now. You are dedicated to the Father's work in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your mighty hand. 